der gestiefelte Kater 3D. Ja, nach Schreck 1, 2, 3 und 4, die ja unterschiedlich gut waren, ist der Film mal wieder überraschenderweise tatsächlich wirklich gelungen und ziemlich witzig. Äh, Antonio Banderas in seiner Paraderolle als niedlich guckender Kater. Dazu werde ich ihn gleich mal ins Interview locken. Ich habe mir extra ein Katzenspielzeug mitgenommen. Mal gucken, wie das äh, ankommt. Also ich gehe jetzt mal rein und unterhalte mich mit Antonio Banderas, äh, Samma Hayek und den beiden Synchronsprechern, die äh, das böse Paar Jack and Jill sprechen. Ja gut, also rein und mal gucken, was die mir zu erzählen haben. Alles, was ich brauche, sind meine Stiefel. Okay, so, can you tell me about the movie like two excited 10-year-old kids would tell about the movie to their friends? This is the best movie I have ever seen. It's so cool. There's these two dudes. One's a cat, one's an egg. Und der Kater, der, der hat meinen Freund gehabt und das war ein Ei. Und die wollten, die wollten eigentlich zusammen so magische Bohnen finden. Because these beans, they plant the beans and this is, and this big plant goes all the way to the sky, through the, through the clouds and they find these golden eggs and then they get back to, to the land. But there is some kind, I mean, there, one of the friends is an egg. He's yeah. an egg. Und dann nehmen sie das Baby von der Gans weg und gehen wieder runter und dann wird es aber ganz schlimm, weil die Mama will ihr Baby wieder haben. Und die können auf Wolken sitzen. Ja. And they're best friends, but then there is this girl that comes in and it's really a cat and she's really, really hot and she's very good with the sore and then she starts, she's gonna go And they die, and they die. Yeah, I was gonna get there. And they have to go on this great adventure and Puss is trying to regain, you know, this this terrible thing that he lost, you know. She's gonna go steal yeah. this thing, but then this dude that was the cat gets on her way to steal this thing. And they die, and they die twice right. in the movie. My kid's 10 years old. So challenging. Yeah, yeah, no, Chana, but it was, it was vital, though, that I make at least a film that he could... I just have to say this beforehand. I remember as he's heading back into school, the movie is coming out in the States, and he was, he was really anxious. He was just dreading that the film would not be good, that he couldn't face his uh, classmates, you know? It was like a... I felt like I was putting him in an awkward position, you know, the whole summer. We will need you. She is Kitty Sampfote. I believe you so geschickt, that you don't even notice. She is a boss's cat. Has your son seen the movie yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I would show, I would show him all the time. I mean, and he's not. He was actually, I would hit him up for ideas all the time. You know, over the last three and a half years, both my sons, I have a ten-year-old and a seven-year-old, and I would pitch them stuff every night before they went to bed, and uh, so we could brainstorm some ideas. And they came up with some good ideas. So they're relieved now that they're relieved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, I, I got, I got, I, I, I got the okay. I have to say. You were really? I, I was a little bit anxious too. A little because skeptical. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the first two movies. Yeah. The third and fourth, they were okay, but it wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't excited about them as I was yeah. for the first two movies. You were going tired. Um, you were going tired. When I saw, okay, Puss in Boots, is this really necessary to, to, to do them? And, and I saw the movie and I was really entertained. That's I, good. I saw, I saw it in, in, in LA a few weeks ago and then. It was really, really entertaining, and That's great. it had, had a quite a different vibe to the to the Shrek movies. If yeah. you if you expect it to be just like the funny sidekick from the Shrek movies, right. uh, it's not that. He's he's really the main character this time, and it's um, how do you approach that, and uh, why the the mood change? Well, I mean, I've had I've worked I worked on the first three. I didn't really work on the fourth one um, because I was working on Puss in Boots, but you know. I might have had a similar experience that you had. It's you know I love I love the Shrek movies and I love the characters, and uh, but really really wanted this film to feel completely different, just be be its own thing, you know, it, its own world that could exist on its own. So how do you get into the mindset of a cat? Does that help? 
Yeah, you, you do that during. Have you in preparation <laughs> in preparation of the movie? <laughs> we are very sleepy. If you do that twice, <laughs> it may happen that they have to bring have us you a seen pillow, like, and we will sleep. Have, have you seen like cat videos on YouTube? Like, how do you get in the? No, mindset? we didn't. But the people actually that was creating the um, all the cartoons, they confessed to us that they, that they just everything. download every video of cats on the internet everything over there just to see reactions cute things that they can reproduce in the movie so stuff they, like they really that. did that oh yeah me oh, before do. before i used to go to my sessions instead of taking a shower i would lick myself and this is how i would get into the cart your sessions your sessions with your, your shrink when i know the sessions will oh. talk <laughs> Lost kids. The only comparisons are, of course, this character came from that world, so they're always going to be connected. But even, even that fairy tale landscape that's in uh, Puss in Boots, it feels different than the uh, than the Shrek world. You know, and it's it's not it's not about satirizing fairy tales, and it's not about pop culture references and 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 things that you know I, I think played out a little bit yeah. in those films. I mean, they're great and they're they're beautiful the way they exist, but. Um, Making Puss in Boots was very liberating in that we had a great character, so so dynamic that you just you let that character actually um, almost lead us in terms of how we were going to approach the style of filmmaking and the color, you know, the production design, and we knew that we could make just something that was more epic and even just a little bit more fantasy to it, you know. That's why we, that's really why we picked a a fairy tale that that involved the beanstalk, you know, going up to a land of giants, just for the opportunity to to leave the planet, you know, and do something do something fantastic and a little weird and a little strange, a little surreal and beautiful. Elton spricht das Ei. Yeah. Wie seid ihr am Ball bei der Eulen Rollen gekommen? Bei Elton, denke ich, es gibt optisch vielleicht gewisse Parallelen bei euch jetzt nicht. <lacht> Danke. <lacht> ich meine, ich sehe es ja schon hinter euch stehen. Wie seid ihr an die Rollen gekommen? Ich muss sagen, ich habe abgenommen nach dem Dreh. Oh! Wir haben uns sehr gefreut. Das war ja, das ist einfach ein. Da kannten wir den Film noch gar nicht, kannten nur die Szenen, haben aber anhand der Szenen schon gesehen, dass das wirklich toll gemacht ist. Ja. Ist es wahr, dass Katzen immer auf ihren Füßen landen? Nein, das Gerücht verbreiten nur Hunde. Ich hasse Katzen. <lacht> wenn ich das deiner Mama erzähle. Ich finde, das ist mehr, auch wenn es jetzt nicht genau dieses Mädch äh, Märchen vom gestiefelten Kater ist, wenn es eine moderne äh, Version davon ist, finde ich, es ist äh, deutlich mehr Märchen mhm. als Shrek zum Beispiel. Okay. And, and the cute look, can you do the, the eye thing? Yeah, I cannot. You cannot? No. So that, that, that's, that's not your acting, that's no, really the like power of animation? Can you, can you do the, I bet you can do the eye thing. Can you do the, the eye thing? Can you do it? No, but I can do the girl version. Oh, look. That's pretty interesting. Maybe if we do a, you know, a live action movie about pushing Bush or something. <laughs> Maybe you know, we can cast I'm, I'm more of a wombat guy. So really? Wombat, yeah. Okay. So, but I like cats, but I'm more of a wombat guy, so. <laughs> Die Welt ist in Gefahr und braucht einen Helden. Komm schon, Garten! Der das Zeug dazu hat. Nein! Heilige Wackermolle! <lacht> sich diese Stiefel anzuziehen. Oh. Sind die Absätze für deine Kerl nicht ein bisschen hoch? Beim Moviepilot, da geht es um Filmempfehlungen, deswegen interessieren uns immer auch Lieblingsfilme. Deswegen würde ich von euch noch ganz schnell zum Schluss gerne wissen: Habt ihr absolute Lieblingsfilme, die ihr mit auf die einsame Insel nehmen würdet? Ja. Willst du anfangen? Ja, fang du mal an. Of all times. Of it doesn't have to be for kids. I gotta no, tell no, you. Not for kids. You gotta see uh, the, the skin I live in. I have. La piel que habito. I recommend that one. It's very, very interesting. It is a great movie. I'm gonna go for more classic and nothing that has to do with me or with her or with uh, anybody that I know. I love my favorite movies of all times. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. That's, that's a very good, good choice. My all-time favorite movie changes all the time, constantly. But lately, for some reason, it's I've been thinking a lot about um, uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail a lot lately because I love Terry Gilliam's um, animation that was very inspiring growing up. And um, and I always remember watching that movie. I was way too young to be watching it. In fact, I should have been out in bed. But I just remember watching it, you know, kind of sitting on the staircase, like peering through the railings and watching it on TV. It was. 
hysterical to me and it was also f forbidden you know so i think it made it special too um yeah terry gilliam was a huge influence uh, for for years forever i mean up until now also <laughs> rio bravo is sicherlich einer davon taxi driver is einer davon um, Charlie Chaplin, äh, tja, äh, welchen nehme ich da? Eigentlich alle, alle Chaplin-Filme. Das ist eine gute Kiste, wie ich <lacht> ja. sagen. Und den Paten liebe ich noch. Ah oh, ja, den, den Paten. Ja. And with Puss in Boots, um, there were a lot of influences. Um, and we, we, we looked at it as a... a as trying to create this legend behind this character. So we, we look to legendary cinematic figures more than anything else, you know? So I think if you look at Puss in Boots, you'll find like a little bit of Clint Eastwood, you know, in him, uh, a little bit of James Bond, uh, Errol Flynn, even Indiana Jones, you know, his sense of adventure and, oh, and uh, yeah, exactly. And Zorro, which, and those you get for free yeah. because they come with the package with uh, Antonio, so. But yeah, they're all they're all sort of in there and, and influencing, and it carries over. It's not just character; it just it influences just the way that movie looks and feels. So, will we put, uh, see Puss in Boots again? I hope so. You know, we'll see. We'll see. Um, After that movie, I really hope so. Uh, me too. Me too. Because I, I actually think you can get a little crazier with the character. You can get a little crazier with the situations as long as you can uh, just find a still like a really personal story to tell. You know like break his heart in some way, give him something to, to get back or regain or something emotional. That's what will make the, the, hopefully the future film special if, there, if there's an appetite, you know, if there's an audience for it. I hope so. Es war einmal in Amerika, um, Shining, um, überhaupt alle Filme mit Meryl Streep, Susan Sarandon, um, hier, Old Man. Ach, ja, uh, toll. Alle Filme von Oldman. Um, uh, alle Filme mit Glenn Close. Isabelle Huppert. Hier die Haneke-Filme. Klavierspielerin. Also ich sehe, ihr nehmt eine gigantische... Es wird eine große Kiste. Wir können es dann eine Weile auf der Insel aushalten. 